Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joey. I needed to make a video because there was a set of two videos released today by Diego Sanchez that were incredibly bizarre. And this is a situation, Diego Sanchez and Josh Fabia, uh, something that I have not talked about on my channel yet. So I figured I'd make a video. Um, starting off, it, it appears that Diego Sanchez has been released by the UFC, but I'll get to all that in a minute. So Diego Sanchez, a couple years ago, I believe it was 2019-ish, so roughly two years ago, left Jackson Wink um, camp and decided to go with this self-awareness guru, Josh Fabia. If you guys haven't seen this or don't, look up YouTube videos. The guy's an incredibly strange guy. He almost seems like a bit of a cult leader. And it's just, he's, he's a very weird dude. Anyway, since leaving Jackson Wink, Diego has gone on a three-fight losing streak. Technically, not really, though, because he got absolutely destroyed by Michael Chiesa. Then, technically, he got the win versus Michelle Pereira because Michelle Pereira accidentally did an illegal knee. So he got DQ'd, and Diego technically gets the win. But Diego was getting worked over on that fight, and that fight, you know, I don't count that as a win, even though it's technically a win. And then he lost last year by decision to Jake Matthews. So in that time, there's been some incredibly, and I'll get to the videos that he released today, some incredibly weird, you know, stuff that's gone on. And I'll just talk about what I remember a little bit. Um, leading up to the Michael Chiesa fight, Josh Fabia and Diego was telling the athletic commission that if I were to get this choke on Michael Chiesa, make sure you stop it immediately because this could this will kill him if you don't stop it right away. And just, you know, there's been time after time, bizarre comment after bizarre comment. There's the incident where Josh Fabia confronted Matt Sarah. That apparently, he didn't like what Matt Sarah was saying about Josh Fabia. Keep in mind, this guy, Josh Fabia, has no MMA coaching experience. So I don't know if he's some kind of scam artist. Uh, but I'll I'll go out there, you know, and, and a lot of people, you know, especially mainstream MMA media members uh, who won't say this type of thing just because in fear of, of, you know, causing some type of stir. And also, they can't say this. Diego Sanchez is not mentally all there. And Josh Fabia, at some point, is taking advantage of this man, I guess maybe getting a cut of his paychecks. If you just look up Josh Fabia, he's doing these bizarre training videos. There's one of him, like, flowing around a heavy bag as it's swinging around. Uh, you know, there's all these weird videos of him circulating on the Internet, He's not a real MMA coach. Then, on top of that, he did a Luke Thomas interview like a year ago or so, and he makes absolutely everything, every possible thing there could be, he makes it about himself and, and a personal attack on him. And for a guy that calls himself a guru of self-awareness, this guy couldn't have less self-awareness if he tried. He does not know how to read a room. He does not know how to act. Um, you know, he approaches... You know, one guy says one thing that can be construed as negative about Diego or Josh Fabia's relationship. Uh, you know, he he automatically goes and attacks that person and says how they're wrong. Uh, let me get to the videos that Diego released because I really wanted to talk about those. Those are the most recent. So before every fight on each card, the leading up to the fight week, so to leading up to the fight card on a Saturday, Whoever's running like the commentary team, whether it be the backstage interviewer or any of the commentary team, they have a fighter meeting where they interview the fighter and they talk about different things. They ask them questions. They write down notes. So they have stuff to talk about on the broadcast. And during this fighter meeting for Diego last year when he fought Jake Matthews, Josh Fabia decided to record the whole interview, which is kind of weird to begin with. So at the end of the interview, after, after they say, okay, Diego, thank you. Everything goes normal, like normal. They interview him, blah, blah, blah. Josh Fabia comes out and is like, um, you guys aren't giving Diego a fair shake. And you guys are treating him wrong and saying negative things about him. Paul Felder looks dead at him and is like, dude, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. And Fabia goes, oh, I'm not saying about you. I'm saying generally. And he goes on to basically complain that he's being character assassinated online. And it's not it's not the commentator's fault. It's the way you're acting. You're a weirdo. You're yelling strange things in the corner. You're posting these weird videos. 
you know, acting like you're uh, Rex Kwan Do, Do from Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, so it's your own fault that the people, you know, you're being viewed in a certain light. And he's blaming the commentators and they're like, Paul Felder's like, well, what have I ever said? And they're like, oh, not you. Um, finally, you know, some of them say, you know, that happens to everyone. Every person of a little bit of notoriety gets hate and gets, you know, this or that. And he's like, every time somebody comes back at him with some type of sensible response, he just agrees with him. He has nothing to say because, he, but they start, Diego's pretty much quiet for the most part. Um, Megan O'Levy basically bitches him and is like, uh, you know, this is a, this meeting was about Diego, not you. And you're wasting our time right now. Uh, you know, there's other fighters that are waiting to get into this room right now to have this fighter interview. So you're wasting our time right now. But what he did was just go on to make it completely about him. You know, that he's being crucified and this and that. that that's the, that's the, you know, that's what you get for being in the public light and acting like a straight up fucking weirdo. That's what you get. I mean, this guy's a straight up weirdo. That's what he is. He seems like a scam artist to me. Diego seems to either not know or not care. Uh, apparently, Stefan Bonner's part of this crew. So, so I mean, that's not, you know, when you look at the, the clientele this guy has with no coaching MMA experience, uh, you know, he ain't got the smartest guys running with him, you know, as far as you ain't got any elite fighters. I mean, you look at Diego, he's gotten destroyed three times since he left Mike and... Uh, since he left uh, Jackson Wink to train with Josh Fabia, you know? So it's so weird. It's so bizarre. There's so many, you know, you had Diego coming out in one of the fights. I think it was the Pereira fight. It looked like almost like he was clucking like a chicken. Um, and, you know, the corner advice has been weird. They've shown it, you know, live. Some of the corner advice he's getting was just super strange. And this guy is just going on to make it completely about him. And complaining that the commentators aren't commentating it right, and and that that uh, you know they're saying guys are winning rounds that are not winning. You don't get to control what the UFC commentary team says. You know they get to say what they see, what they're watching live. Sometimes it may be right, sometimes it may be wrong. But this guy can't go out there and act like he gets to control what they say about what they're seeing with their eyes. You know that's their job. Uh, and just to complain to them, and every time they came back with something like, dude, what are you talking about? What did I do? I didn't do anything. He just says, oh, no, I'm just talking about in general. And he just makes absolutely everything about himself. So anyway, also, on May 8th, Diego Sanchez was supposed to fight Cowboy Cerrone. Well, as of yesterday, that fight was called off, supposedly. Diego Sanchez out of the fight. That's all we heard. So... We didn't get a reason why, an injury or anything. Diego Sanchez has since posted plenty of training videos online. I don't know who he's training with. You know, it seems like he's, you know, as uh, Nate Diaz said, playing touch butt. Um, you know, and he's, so it looks like he's healthy, so he must have pulled out for some other reason. And now it appears, based on Instagram posts by Diego, and I'll link the videos, the bizarre videos that Diego posted on Instagram. I'll link them down below. And, uh, the other thing I can't link, I think Diego posted on his Instagram, basically he's a free agent. The UFC has cut him, which doesn't surprise me if that is true. I believe it is true. The UFC doesn't want nothing to do with Diego. At this point, he's basically lost one, two, three, four, five, five out of his last seven. And he's got destroyed quite a few times in those five losses. Uh, you know, Diego has been around forever. So I know the UFC probably has a little bit of a soft spot for him just because he's been around forever. But he's not been an elite fighter for ever, basically. <laughs> I mean, maybe eight years ago he could have been considered, like, top 15. But at this point, you know, he he hasn't got a win over a quality guy. The last quality win he has is in 2009. I was barely even a fan of MMA in 2009. He's taken a lot of damage, and who knows, maybe that's a factor in the way he's acting. He's taken a lot of significant damage. Look at the fight against Gilbert Melendez. How many shots did he eat there? Uh, so this is a very sad story. This is a very bizarre story. Uh, you know, I encourage everyone to go look this guy, Josh Fabi, up. And also, one last thing I want to say is, on the videos that Diego posted, because I guess his coach wanted to post him, you know, the school of self-awareness guru, Josh Fabi, wanted him to post it. When I saw it originally, when it was posted, you know, maybe like a couple minutes after it was posted, there was about 60 comments on there. Every single one of them was negative. 
So Fabi is worried about what the commentaries team is saying about him. Oh, they're giving him char- their character assassinating him. But yet he's posting stuff online, making himself look like an absolute fool. So I have a feeling, and if I was Bellator, if I'm PFL, if I'm one championship, I am not touching Diego Sanchez or Josh Fabia with a 10-foot pole. I think it's possible maybe bare knuckle boxing could pick him up. But if I'm any organization, I'm not picking up Diego Sanchez. It's just too much of a liability. It's super strange. Josh Fabia has like a Jim Jones type, you know, vibe to him. Cult leader. Uh, he's supposed to be this self-awareness guru, but he's, you know, he's the least self-aware person I've ever known. You know, he's constantly trying to confront people for things he doesn't have backup information for, you know. So this is just a very bizarre circumstances, and I just wanted to make a video going over these bizarre circumstances. Uh, this stuff has been playing out over the course of two years. I encourage you to look some of it up. Anyway, if this is the first time watching one of my videos, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Give me your comments below and let me know what you think of this whole Diego Sanchez, Josh Fabia situation. Because I'm still trying to comprehend what's going on here. You know, it's it's super weird. It's super deserving, just yeah, super disturbing, super bizarre. And I, hopefully this saga is over. But I'm kind of sad we didn't get to see Cowboy versus Diego because I think Cowboy would have wrecked him. But, you know, he's cut from the UFC, it seems like. I don't know if anyone else is going to pick him up. Maybe, maybe not. We'll talk about it in the future. Thanks for watching. Like the video. See you in the next video.